Okay, this question is about this binomial distribution here. So I've got um, an exact distribution, which is as given. X is a binomial with an n of 40 and a p of 0.2. And I'm being asked a distribution that will approximate X. So it's a distributional approximation. So I look at my n. n is 40. Okay. 40 is... Well, it's quite large. It's uh, The box above said 50, but 40 is not bad, okay? And I can't do an approximation at all um, because um, without n being large. Both of the approximations to a binomial need large n. 40 is large enough. So my comment on that is I'm go boldly going to say it's large. If it's less than 30, then you couldn't say that. 40 is okay. Okay, and then my p-value, which is 0 0.2. Now, is this, is this small? No, it's not. To be small, it's got to be less than 0.1, I'd say. Um, and in fact, I don't want it to be small because I want to use um, the approximation that I think I'm going to be using is this one, the normal one. So I want P to be not too close to 1 or 0. Okay, so P is sort of a middling value. So this is not close to 0 or 1. Okay, so that is how you set up. Um, that, that, those are the things we need to check for a distribution to be uh, an approximation to be valid. And in this case, if p is not close to 0 or 1, but n is still large, then we use a normal approximation. So my approximate distribution is going to be x twiddling a normal. Okay, now what do I need to set up for this normal? I need my parameters. So my parameters, okay, for a normal, I need um, a mu and uh, a, a, var a mean and a, a standard deviation or a variance. Um, let's work with variance because that sigma squared is what this uses and also um, because um, my formulas for mean and variance are the formulas that I've got on that magical page 11. Okay, From a binomial I can work out a mean and a variance. So let's do that and then use those as my parameters for my normal. So I need a mean. So my mean uh, formula we just saw on page 11 is NP. So NP is 40 times 0.2. Okay, and that is 8. So my mean of my binomial is 8. So I set up a normal with a mean of 8. So mu is 8. Okay, for my bi binomial the sigma squared, the variance is uh, NP1 minus P. Okay, which is going to be the 40 times the 0.2. That's N times P and 1 minus P. 1 minus this P is 0.8. So I'm going to get 6.4. And it's really important. I know that's the variance, not the standard deviation. Now in this notation here, we do put the variance. We do put the 6.4 here. Okay. But it's always very good to be clear that mu is 8. Uh, sigma squared is 6.4. And I will be needing sigma later. Sigma is the square root of 6.4. Okay. So always get your sigma and your sigma squared set up so that you don't make a mistake with your variance. Okay. All right. Now we're putting that on hold for a bit. I've done part A. But in part B, we've got to do continuity corrections. And then in part C, we're going to follow up by finding the probabilities. So in B1, okay, how do I get the, the continuity correction if I want the probability of x being less than 6? Well, as always, we're starting with a binomial, so we need the binomial diagram. So the probability goes, uh, the diagram goes, naught is the lowest outcome. Okay, highest outcome is 40, but I probably don't need to include that. I do need values near 6, 5, 6, 7, dot, dot, dot. I want to be less than 6. So I could be far, naught, I could be 5, I can't be 6, I can't be 7. So where are my boxes? Okay, well, my big box captures all the ticks. And my small box, I don't need one because there's no probability at the beginning. Okay, so in fact, it's a very simple box. So the probability of being less than six on a binomial I've just entered five onto my calculator. But I'm approximating this, which is discrete. This is just separate values. When we actually work out our normal probability, so in C1, we're going to go to a normal. So I'm going to have a diagram like this. I know that the mean of my normal is going to be 8, so that's in the middle. This cutoff value is definitely less than 8, but it's not going to be 5 and it's not going to be 6. Okay? For a binomial, there are no values between 5 and 6, and I tell the calculator the one that I want included in the box. But with a normal, okay, the separation between 5 and 6, all values between those are 
possible. And what we do is the continuity correction, as we call it, we have to go with the midpoint value. So that's why your box diagram is doubly helpful, because it shows you that the cutoff is between 5 and 6. So the midpoint is 5.5. So that's what I'll be using for the probability. B, question B, just asked me for the continuity correction. So the answer to this B is that the probability I need is X being less than 5.5. It would not be wrong to add a uh, less than or equal to, because remember, for a continuous one, for a normal, the probability of being on this line is actually zero. Okay, so we're going from a discrete distribution where five is possible, six is possible, there's nothing in between, to one where all values are possible. So if I want to separate five and six, I have to do that at the midpoint. Okay, so. Let's go back to part B. I, I just looked ahead at the, the diagram we'd need for C. But let's go back to part B. And let's think about the continuity correction for this one. So for B2. I should say 2, shouldn't it? Never mind. For B2, um, we want X to be less than or equal to 8. So the diagram has values near 8. So I need a 7 and a 9. <coughs> dot, dot, dot. Probability of being less than or equal to 8. Well, all of these are ticks. 9 and above are crosses. So the box that catches all the ticks would be this one. That's my big box. I don't need a little box because there are no crosses to get rid of in that box. So it's the probability of um, all values up to 8 but not values after that. So the cutoff is between 8 and 9. So the continuity correction is the probability of x being less than 8.5 because 8.5 is where that line comes. You can see how the box diagram helps. And then for part 3, okay, this one here, that should be a 3. X is greater than 10, so 0, dot, dot, dot. Values near 10, 9, 10, 11, dot, dot, dot. Okay, what do I want? I don't want, um, I want X to be greater than 10, so I don't want anything up to 10. 10 itself is not greater than 10, so that's a cross, but I can be 11. So I want values 11 or more. So my big box would be everything. That would tell me I need to do a 1 minus. Okay. My little box would be here. My cutoff is between 10 and 11. Okay. Now the um, by the continuity correction therefore I need is, well the value, I need, need one value. There's a cutoff which is at the point which is between 10 and 11. So it's the probability of X being, now it's greater than that cutoff, greater than 10.5. OK, and finally, for the last continuity correction, um, I've got 4 and I've got 7 involved. So this is part 4. This should say 4. Part 4, OK, so I want to include 4 but not 7. So my diagram would be 0, dot, 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 uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot, 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 dot. Which ones do I want? Don't want 0, don't want 3. I do want 4, 4 is included, 5 is OK, 6 is OK. I've got to be less than 7. So 7 is not OK. And 8 is not OK, nothing else is. So this would be, I would really absolutely for real need two boxes here. The box to catch the ticks would go there. And the box to get rid of the crosses would go there. So where are my cutoffs? Well, this is between 3 and 4. So my continuity correction is, say, is, is saying the lower one is going to be 3.5. OK, whoops is less than my x, is less than, and my upper one is halfway between 6 and 7, 6.5. So I've now got the probability I would need to work out from my normal distribution in each case. All right. Now at this point, really, the function of the boxes is to show me where the divide comes. All right. This one I'd do with a 1 minus. I'm not going to need a 1 minus for this. This one I'd do with my calculator and subtract 2 from the calculator. I'm not going to need to. Once I've turned them into normal uh, distributions, I now do what I'd do for a normal. Okay. So for C1, I've already drawn the diagram. Okay. So I just need to find the probability here. I need uh, the lower z is going to be minus 99999. The uh, z for here is going to be my upper. So what is that z? My z is going to be x 5.5. Minus mu 8 over sigma. Okay, so way back here we set up our, our approximate distribution which had a mu and a sigma squared, a mean and a variance, but it was always a good idea to write down mu and sigma squared and also sigma. Sigma is the square root of 6.4. So, square root of 6.4 on the bottom there, 
I've got a z-value, do that calculation. There's my calculator giving me that answer. Change it to a nice decimal. So my z-value is minus 0.9882. And now I go into my normal distribution, P, normal CD we always use, don't we? Two. Okay, and I need a lower and an upper. So my lower was minus 9999. My upper is now this um, minus point uh, nine eight eight two no I've done that wrong haven't I the upper is minus point nine eight eight two and the probability I need uh, sigma is not as it should be uh, mu is uh, sigma is one and mu is not so my probability is uh, p is naught point one six one five so that's my answer for the probability here okay and now i just need to do corresponding things for the others so you draw your diagrams so for the next one probability of x being less than uh 8.5 well the mean is still at 8 but now i want it to be less than 8.5 so i need a line at 8.5 so now it's going to be a probability of more than a half reality check this probability was clearly less than a half that's what turned out to be the case this is going to be the same thing but the z value for 8.5 is from my calculator 0.1976 and so now I need my lower and my upper well my lower is going to be minus 999 again okay and I need to come up to this z value I've just got I don't know what that one is that that's already in the calculator I want to use plus 0 0.1976 1976 let the calculator do its stuff and we get p equals uh, 0.57 eight three two to five significant figures okay which is more than a half reality check the diagram tells me it has to be more than a half okay so we've just turned these into normal distribution calculations all right so i'm running out of space for the last two so this one here i'm just going to tell you what z value should get so when you standardize your 10.5 we get a z value of 0.9882 and on my normal sketch I need a value of 10.5 which is greater than 8 so 10.5 is over here 10.5 okay and I want to be greater than that so I want this probability up here which I can see is a small probability I expect a positive z value because this is z equals 0 in the middle I've got a positive z value I'm going to be using this z value as my lower and an upper of 9999 like that and my calculator tells me the probability is that so my p equals 0 0.1615 0 0.16153 okay so i've got my probability for the third one and for the fourth one my cutoffs were at 3.5 and 6.5 which are here and here on my diagram they're both less less than this mean is eight sorry about the squashed up diagram i hope you have more space to to write your solution beautifully so i want that probability so i need my two z values and again i'm looking i haven't got space to show my methods z1 and z2 are here's z1 this is when i standardize 3.5 minus 8 over root 6.4 so i get minus 1.779 and my z2 i'm going to change it to 6.5 on the top So I get a Z2 of minus uh, 0.5929. Okay, so I use those as my lower and my upper on here. So my lower is minus 1.779 and my upper is minus 0.5929. And I get my probability, my p is 0 0.239. So p equals 0 0.2390. And we've done for the probabilities. Right, marathon video, but the last thing we've got to do is justify the use of a distributional approximation in this question. And in fact, I have already done it. Uh, I've run out of space at the bottom of my page. Okay, um, but uh, this is my answer to D n is large, p is not close to 0 or 1, therefore I can use a normal approximation to a binomial. Okay, so that's my justification that I need.
for part d.